In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Friday, the fourth of August, twenty twenty three. 17th week in Ordinary Time, and today we remember St. John Vianney, priest, known as the cure of us, John Mary Vianney, born in France in 1786, is the beloved patron of parish priests. As a seminarian, he struggled greatly, mainly because of his poor performance in his studies. Eventually, he was ordained and sent to us, where few people practice the faith. His holiness, preaching, prayer and penance transformed the parish of us, and people began to flock to him for the sacrament of reconciliation. He died in 1859. We pray for all our parish priests. We pray for all our pastors all over the world that they may be passionate, not about money, but about the people they serve. Souls for God, that through the intercessions of John Mervianne, there may be more people on the side of God than on the other side. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Nondumi saw Elizabeth Mulauzi celebrating her birthday today from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, takes for us the first reading. Fanny Namonde from Lilongwe, Malawi, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Andrew Mwila Chapewa, celebrating his priestly anniversary today from Ndola Diocese in Zambia. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant we pray that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. These are the feasts of the Lord, which we shall proclaim as times of holy convocation. A reading from the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1, 4 to 11, 15 to 16, 27, 34b to 37. The Lord said to Moses, These are the appointed feasts of the Lord, the holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at the time appointed for them. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month in the evening, is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no laborer's work, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord seven days. On the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no laborer's work. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, when you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring the chef of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. You shall have the chef before the Lord, that you may find acceptance. On the day after the Sabbath, 
the priest shall wave it. And you shall count from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the chef of the wave offering. Seven full weeks shall they be, counting fifty days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall present a cereal offering of new grain to the Lord. On the tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be for you a time of holy convocation, and you shall afflict yourselves and present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the fifteenth day of this seventh month, and for seven days is the feast of both to the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work. Seven days you shall present offerings by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall hold a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no laborious work. These are the appointed feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim as times of holy convocation. For presenting to the Lord offerings by fire, burnt offerings and cereal offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its proper day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorio Psalm. Psalm 81 verse 3 to 4, 5 to 6 AB, 10 to 11 AB. Response is taken from Psalm 81, verse 2a, and the response is, Sing joyfully to God our strength. Sing joyfully to God our strength. Raise a song and sound the timbre, the sweet-sounding harp and the root. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, when the moon is full on our feast. Sing joyfully to God our strength. For this is a statute in Israel, a command of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree for Joseph when he went out from the land of Egypt. Sing joyfully to God our strength. Let there be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship a fallen God. I am the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Sing joyfully to God our strength. Gospel Acclamation 1 Peter 1 verse 25 Alleluia, Alleluia the Lord abides forever. That word is the good news which was preached to you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 54 to 58. At that time, coming to his own country, Jesus taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do mighty works there because of their unbelief. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
We finished yesterday the book of Exodus. Now we are on Leviticus and we have gone straight away to chapter 23 of the book of Leviticus. And just for you to have a brief background of this book, the book is set around Mount Sinai where the people of Israel are encamped while God appears in the tent of meeting, dictating to Moses his specifications regarding the Jewish ceremonial laws. The laws are extremely detailed, outlining every aspect of how and when religious offerings are to be presented to God. Now, the purpose of Leviticus is to provide instruction and laws to guide a sinful yet redeemed people in their relationship with the Holy God. The book communicates that receiving God's forgiveness and acceptance should be followed by holy living and spiritual growth. And Moses makes it clear that spiritual growth was going to be obtained by leaving the seven important feasts of the Jewish life. And these seven feasts are outlined in today's word as appointed feasts. These are the appointed feasts of the Lord, the holy convocations, what are these appointed feasts? They are Passover, unleavened bread, first fruit and Shabbat, also known as Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. These first four are celebrated around spring. During spring, that is between March and April, they are celebrated around that time. That is why we have taken it up all over the world to celebrate the Passover around the spring. When in the northern hemisphere, the flowers are just coming out. That is the time when the first four are celebrated. The three final feasts in the four, that is in autumn, are in the Hebrew month of Tishri. September and October. They represent the events associated with the Messiah's second coming, which has yet to occur. These three final feasts form the basis for what the Bible calls blessed hope in Titus chapter 2 verse 13. And it is good for us to just have an overview of this feast. The Passover, Pesach, this is the foundation of feast. The six feasts that follow are built upon it. It is covered in the passage that we read today. It also starts the second feast, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the words that are used to describe what took place in Egypt. None fits better than one word, redemption. Israel was redeemed so that they could worship and serve the true and living God. You are redeemed so that you can worship the one and true God. You are free to worship, not free to do anything evil in this world, but free to worship. And the unleavened bread, Pascha, Easter, should remind you of the role that you have. And then we have the unleavened bread. And the Passover, Pesach, should remind you of the role that you have. The second one is unleavened bread. This feast was to last seven days. On the first and seventh day, there was to be a time of meeting, convocation between God and man. So all these feasts were oriented towards God. They were not social events. No, they were divine events. It's not like the way we have made of them today. We take them as social events. As if it is not enough with Christmas that has been so commercialized, we are now commercializing Easter. A lot of business is being done around Easter. And in the end, people are focusing on an egg. Easter egg and forgetting about the Christ who rose from the dead because the first four feasts are focusing on the first coming of Christ. 
And then we have the feast of first fruits. The third feast starts on the second day of the feast of unleavened bread. First fruits, according to Jewish understanding, occurs on the 16th day of the Hebrew month, Nisan. It is the first crop planted in winter, the barley harvest. The first fruits of the harvest is cut and in a prescribed ceremony presented to the Lord. They are presented to the Lord to just remind us that whatever we have, whatever we get as the first fruit belongs to the Lord. Everything, including your child, the first child belongs to the Lord. Present your child to the Lord. Present your salary, your first salary to the Lord. Present your first crop to the Lord. And this is what we call Zamasika in Chewa of Malawi, Mozambique, and Zambia. Zamasika. That is the feast of harvest. The feast of the first fruits. And then we have Pentecost or Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. This feast is known as Pentecost because it means 50th. After seven weeks, 49 days, the 50th day, this celebration is done. The word that connects this feast is the word orientation. This feast is recorded in the word we are today, although we had to jump a few verses. It is recorded on chapter 23, verse 15 to 21. With this first fruits of the wheat harvest, Israel was to bring two loaves of bread. This is the only feast where leavened bread was used. The two loaves represented Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. It was the coming of Ruha Akadosh, the Holy Spirit, that reinstated the renewed covenant. The separation between Jew and Gentile has been broken down. Now we are one. Then we have the remaining three that are celebrated in September, October. That is the Feast of Trumpet. And this feast is also known as Zikron Teruah. Memorial of Blowing, and Yom Truah, the Day of Blowing, and Rosh Hashanah, literally meaning Head of the Year. This feast is recorded in the passage that we are today. The one word that will connect to this feast is in gathering. Trumpets point to the future day when the Messiah returns to rescue the righteous and judge the wicked. And then we have the day of atonement. Yom Kippur is the atonement covering for the previous year's sins. You know that atonement or sacrifice was the blood of an innocent animal as recorded in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. You will find the feast recorded in the passage that we had today, especially from verse 26 to 32 that was jumped in the passage that we read today. It is considered the most holy day in the Jewish biblical calendar. It is considered the logical extension of what was started on Rosh Hashanah, that is the Feast of Trumpet. And then we have the Feast of Tabernacles, which is called Sukkot. This is the most enjoyable of festivals of the Jewish feasts. It is mentioned in scripture more than any of the other feasts. This feast is recorded in the passage that we had today from verse 34 to verse 37. It has a twofold purpose. It was to bring in the latter harvest, the Jewish thanksgiving, and the command to dwell in boots. It is also known as Zinam Simkatenu. It is also known as the time of our rejoicing. The one word that can summarize this feast is habitation. Getting settled. That when you are in the Lord, you are settled. Having understood this, I can just say a word about the gospel passage of today when Jesus came back to his own people. 
Matthew puts this coming back to his own people in chapter 13, halfway through the ministry of Jesus. That makes a lot of sense because he had a lot of experience by then. Because the more years you have in ministry, the more wisdom you gain. And Jesus had some years in ministry. In Luke, it is put at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. Just after the wilderness experience, he comes back home and he starts preaching. But in Matthew, it is put in chapter 13, after Jesus had preached, had done a lot of preaching, had gained a lot of experience, now he comes back home. And they don't accept him. Because these people were too used to him, too used to his family, too used to his blood, that they missed out big time on the Lord of life. And I know this is happening in many of our lives, that we miss out big time on the Lord in the people God sends to us. Because we are staying with them, we have become familiar, too familiar to them, we miss out on things divine. I hope it's not happening to you, my brother. It's not happening to you, my sister. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you, and happy Feast of John Maria Vianney. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I. This is the air I breathe.